Okay, so likewise with um, trading, if you not cut out to be a uh, scalper, it's going to be very difficult for you to force yourself into that sort of position. Okay, um, connection does seem to be moving in and out, guys. Um, but um, hopefully the recording is not going to be as bad as we have it in terms of the connection right now. Okay, so we looked at um, candlestick patterns, right? And what role they actually play right now. We're just sort of like mapping out what are the key parts of the strategy and finding out how they then come together. And then from there, how we then actually backtest and sort of like a, have a game plan of what we should expect from the market, either in the long term or the short term. But we need to have a general idea of what the market should be doing. And if it's not behaving the way that we would like it to behave, then we obviously need to make these alterations, which are gonna get us the results that we have on a back test. Okay, because if you test the strategy on five years worth of data, for example, and it performs incredibly well, and then you implement or you start forward testing or trading the method, and all of a sudden now, the strategy is losing money. Like the losing streaks are much longer and the winning streaks are much shorter than what your back tests gave you. So then from there, you'll be able to make a really good assessment of whether you are executing the strategy poorly or those market conditions aren't best for the strategy at that particular point in time. So we looked at candlestick. Okay, um, right, guys. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get through the session. Right, um, but as I was saying, I don't have the, the the slides that I usually use, but I will post a link to the previous session that I did that does include the slides. Okay, um, because I'm using a different laptop now that I'm here, and that one is somewhere the case at a region so if you want the one with slides you can i'll send through the link after the session you can go through the slides but for me i feel like this is a bit better in terms of practicality you'll be able to see on um, markets not only past data you'll be able to project okay and see if whatever we're going to be looking at plays out the way that we'd like it to play out okay so looking at this chart, I mean, it's not really important which market it is, but it is the Euro CAD. We're looking at it on the one hour time frame. Um, what we'd like to do on a um, consistent basis is for us to check down markets from the higher time frames. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter which market or which time frame specifically you like to trade. You need to get a sense of the big picture on where the markets are actually headed on the larger time frame because you don't want to be trading into a very strong monthly resistance level, right? You might be buying into a monthly resistance level. You don't want that to be happening. You don't want to be buying at last year's high or last year's low or last month's high and last month's low and that sort of stuff. So you don't want to be trading into those particular areas at the wrong time. Right? So in order to avoid that um, type of scenario, you check down your major markets, right? We've done how to look at markets, right? And which time frames you to usually use, but just to break it down to a very basic sense where everyone can understand, you don't want to be analyzing all six or five or four um, time frames and coming up with different scenarios because basically you're going to get yourself very, very confused because you might have a monthly downtrend and on the one hour time frame, you might see a uptrend, right? So that will really cause a conflict in uh, your mental and sometimes that does deter people from actually taking a position that would have otherwise made them money. So I'll probably use about two or three on the higher time frames, and then probably two um, on the lower time frames just to refine your entries. So 
let's say we've done our check down on the monthly, right? We've decided that um, the euro cad on the monthly time frame is in the downtrend and so forth on the weekly as well as on the daily, right? So daily is coming off a downtrend into a sideways consolidation for the past couple of months. I do believe since um, about July, August last year, and the market has been stuck in a sideways consolidation or range. And now let's say we've um, established that we want to be short on the Euro CAD. Now, firstly, what we want to do is to trade markets that are moving. Okay. It's not a very good idea to trade markets that do this if you want to be a long-term player. Okay, um, let me just highlight this. But if you want to be a long-term player, it's not going to be very prudent, prudent for you to trade markets that do this very often because at the end of the day, I mean, this does look like a fair amount of pips. This is 318 pips. But as a long-term player, you're probably looking at about seven, eight hundred, a thousand pips take profit. So, for example, if we went short around um, forty-five nine nine, that's where the market price is right now. You'd be looking at a take profit of about four hundred. Okay, so three hundred pips is not something to really write home about. So you can't really pay, place that in a position trade. Um, category, right? More like a swing trade. So you want to trade markets that are moving. So one way in which you can do that is to actually execute markets once the range is actually broken, right? So with this particular strategy, first strategy, we look at um, either a ranging market or a market that is trending and breaks a previous support or resistance structure. Um, obviously, a few things need to line up. Right. As we are only on the second um, part of the methodology, the first one being the actual pattern itself, and then the second one being the Fibonacci. So we're actually at the second one. And once we've collected all the data on uh, the signal itself, we know for sure we have a high probability trade setup that is very likely to pay out. Okay. And likewise, if we go in it at, um, let's say, half-heartedly and we're not quite convinced of the trade because not everything did line up, then we know right off the bat that, okay, this is a low probability trade setup. And therefore, I mean, there's a huge possibility that I won't be, be making any money on this trade. And even worse, I will be probably be losing money on the trade. So. If you have a sideways consolidation like this and the market is ranging, right? This is a ranging market and it's moving sideways, you're not really gonna get the bang for your buck. You'd like to see something break out of a range and come in and retest. Or if you have a trending market, sort of like this trend that came down from May, June, and July, right? So I think from May, June, July, you'd like to see the market come in. So in a typical example, in order for us not to tie up our capital or equity on markets that are not moving, right? Because trust me, if you went short on the Euro CAD, for example, in um, ninth month September, okay, on the 9th of September, somewhere around here, you went short, okay. This is probably about. 83 days later, okay, it's almost three months. Almost three months later, the market is still, I mean, round about where you actually executed. So if you want to tie up your equity, trade ranging markets with a long-term bias. But if you want to make consistent profit, right, then you need to be patient enough to wait for a breakout to occur and for that breakout to be confirmed. So let's say, for example, the market breaks out on the upside above this range or above this 47.41 level, and we are looking at buying at a retest of this 47.40, let's just say 47.50. 
Okay, so at this 47.50 level, and we are looking at buying up the market once the market once it pulls back in to retest, and we are going long right now. One of the reasons why we don't just buy when it actually breaks out is because of the prevalence of false breakouts. Okay, false breakouts are very common in the market, and they represent. Um, I can say about 70% of the, 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 the market structure. Okay, um, let me just rerun run through that again, guys. Uh, the connection seems to be very bad today. It's usually bad, but not this bad, so. Excuse my shock. Right, so if we are anticipating a breakout on the upside, let's say above that 47.50 handle. Right, so above that 47.50 handle, we'd like to see the market breakout. But one mistake that a lot of people Okay. All right, guys. Um, I don't even know what to say. The connection is is damn near impossible to deal with. But let's let's try and just um, fight through it and see how far we actually get. Okay. And if the recording is messed up, um, I'll have to find a way just to to record it offline and then allow. And then just upload it um, probably in the even later on this evening or something like that where you guys can just rewatch the whole thing because I mean one minute you guys are here the next minute I'm, I'm just talking to myself so it's actually quite frustrating for me as well so as I was saying 70% um, of the time about 70% of the time the market will be moving sideways it will be ranging right it does seem like the market trends a whole lot more than it actually does, but I mean, from research and study and obviously my own research that I've done on the markets, the market will tend to range sideways more than it actually does trend. So you're going to have a lot of false breakouts, which is why we don't just isolate, let's say, a breakout area in this sense and say, right, if the market reaches, let's say, Seeing that the price right now is at um, 45.98, and be like, okay, if the market goes up and touches that 47.50 level, then I'm buying. Because there's a possibility of that Euro CAD dropping down again to this level again and pushing back up again and then doing the same thing continuously. So you'd much rather be in a market that is moving, a market that is uh, actually structured that does give you potential to actually make money in moving markets. You don't want markets that are stagnant to tie up your equity as I've said before. So the Fibonacci then comes into play because what we can do with the Fibonacci, we essentially the retracement tool allows us to trade in line with what that trend may be, whether it's short term, mid term or long term, doesn't really matter but it allows us to trade markets that are actually moving, right? You can't put or throw in the Fibonacci correct sense and do so in a sideways ranging market and be like, okay, yeah, this is, this is it, right? It's impossible for you to correctly place a Fibonacci retracement tool and have the, 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 the Fibonacci zone that we look for triggered and be in a sideways ranging market that does Barely doesn't have it, really does happen. Okay, so let's say we grab our Fibonacci tool, right? So if we're looking at let's say the price then runs up to somewhere around here, right? So let's say price runs up to here. And let me first clear all of this. So market starts off there, boom, right? Pushes higher. Boom, breaks above that 47.50 level and is there. Okay. 
let's say all of this hasn't happened yet. Let's just remove it to make things practical. Okay, I think a lot of guys just want to come through for the session. They're kind of late, so. All right, so then we throw in our Fibonacci retracement tool like this. Boom, from top, rather from bottom to top. Okay, now what this retracement tool represents is a, um, there's a long history about what the Fibonacci ratio actually is. I mean, you guys can just go on through to the internet and just Google that if you that type of person. Um, and I have explained the ratios, the numbers in a previous video. So it's the one that I said I'm going to link up in the Telegram channel. So you can go through that as well. So we're not going to be going into deep there. Right? I doubt we're going to have a time with the condition as bad as it is. But what we then do is we sort of like anticipate where the market could potentially come in, right? So this yellow line being where the market has moved already and we throw in our Fibonacci from the slow point, right? Through to the high point, to that swing high. And we'd like to see it pull back in to our sort of like Fibonacci zone, which is between this 50% and the 61.8%, okay? Now, if a market moves up 100 pips, so if this move, was 100 pips, right? Then the 50% move down is 50 pips. Okay, if that move moves down to the 100% retracement, if we move down to the 100% retracement, then that means that the market has moved up 100 pips and then moved down 100 pips. That's all it is. Okay. So with that being said, we've looked at the actual structure of the market. The market is in a sideways consolidation, right? We've identified a resistance area that seems pretty decent enough for us to have interest in. Boom, and boom. We have about three touches at this 4750 handle. And therefore, should we see a break above that level? it should be interesting enough for us to take a look at. But we're not just gonna buy when the market breaks above this high because this could happen again and again and again and again. So in order for us to avoid all of that, what we do is we patiently wait for the market to break above that 47.50 handle and then come back into that 4750 handle, which is part of the actual market structure that we've already done. But now we just couple it with the retracement of the Fibonacci, which means we'd like to see the market come in at around between that 50 to 62% retracement. Yeah, I just say the 52% retracement, guys. I mean, it's technically 61.8. But I just don't want to say 61.8 all the time. Okay, so we then like to see the market come back into that particular area, that particular zone, and therefore providing us with, um, we can say, an additional layer of um, higher probability, basically. Okay, that makes any sense. So if this trade, because that's that's all trading basically is, right? Your trades go through a probability rating every single time. They should go a probability rating every single time. So if you have this structure, for example, you have a ranging market, right, with a nice solid resistance level and a round number, okay, and the round number is actually broken and the market comes back into that round number, then you have one, okay, which is a round number, Two, you have a previous market structure, and let's say the market comes into about that 50 to 62% Fibonacci retracement. Then you have three things that you can check off your probability listing. So let's say we wanted to get to six, right? Six being every single thing that we look for in a trade setup lines up perfectly. 
Now, you'd want to have, obviously, a maximum of six, but you'd like to have a minimum of four at least. So each and every single point or each and every single thing adds to that probability scale or that those probability points actually keep ticking. So we'd have one there, boom, we'd be like, all right, previous resistance. And two, we have um, big figure, which is a round number. And three, we have the market come back, coming back into that structure and actually being rejected. So we might look at the candlestick pattern itself. And four, we have that 50 to 62% Fibonacci retracement. So we have a four out of six rating on the probability scale. And therefore we know, okay, this one looks much better than the one that has a one out of six probability rating. Okay, hope that makes sense. So with the fib, right. Okay, that's just a nickname that everyone basically uses. Instead of just rehash or just repeating the word Fibonacci all the time. The Fib then gives us an entry point that we can anticipate for. Okay, a lot of guys have um, this sense of, or this way of actually trading the markets that makes them get into the market in the heat of the moment. Right? There is no, there might be a pre-plan. You might plan the uh, trades, let's say, previous day or two or three days ago, but there's no specific area where you're like, okay, this is where I'm getting in. If the market doesn't reach that level, then I'm not getting in. Because if, for example, the market does pull down, does break up, but pulls down, doesn't reach our level, right? We've highlighted a level that we'd like to see the market coming to. And if it doesn't quite reach that level, then we're not playing. And if it does go into our intended direction, even if it rises up a thousand pips, that should not be our concern because we're only playing the game plan. Right? That's our main objective to keep to keep on and to consistently execute our game plan each and every single trade. But whether the game plan actually works that time, that's not important. But if you understand that the game plan will work long term in the long run, then you will have much more confidence to actually execute on it. So the Fibonacci basically gives us that sort of um, added layer of, I can say professionalism as well, okay? because it allows us to feel a bit better about where our entry levels actually are. Right. And on the flip side of things, we also can use the same Fibonacci to isolate or to look at potential take profit levels. And for example, if we just delete this one and play around with the scenario in our heads where the market did break above that 47.50 level and then did pull back into that 47.50 level, now what? Okay, We've, our trade has been activated. Now where do we get out? The Fibonacci extension part of the retracement tool Okay, allows us to anticipate where we would like to get out based on percentage of, um, okay, based on the actual percentage that uh, the market has moved. All right, so this will be how we plot it. All right, so if we're looking for the extension of it, all right, remember the retracement is if a market moves up 100 pips and moves down 50 pips, that a 50 pip retracement, okay? But if a market moves up, let's say 50, I mean 100 pips rather, and then 50 pips down, and then 100 or another 50 pips up again, then our 50 is gonna be at 100, right? But if the market moves up, let's say 150 pips, right, let's just say 150 pips is at 1618. This is where 150 pips is. It's basically going to be double what this is, right? So this 50 pip drop is going to be half of 
this 150 pip or 150 percent move to the upside so in its basic or most simplest way we just throw in the fibonacci from this swing high over here down to the swing low where our entry actually would be and if the trade doesn't work out then it would extend to the higher points and would start triggering off our take profits okay so let's just boom right so we might see the market come in and be like 161.8 261.8 and 423.6 Okay, so it moves right through all those three levels. But I mean, that's something that we still need to take a look at on a much deeper level about um, where to get out and how to average in and how to average out of trades. And that's something for a different session altogether. But this does give us a heads up in that we understand and we know that we can use this Fibonacci retracement tool to anticipate where the take profits, not only where we can actually get into a market, but where we can potentially get out. Well, sometimes you might leave a few bucks on the table. That, that does happen. You take a position here, right, boom, and all of a sudden you get like quick 50 pips. And that 50 pips, you're like, okay, no, this is it, this is it, this is it. Let me grab it. And as soon as you grab that 50 pips, the market shoots up 160 pips and you're like, wow, I should not have done that. So it just helps with um, having predefined targets that are not so much based on how much you want to make. Because that's one big major or the major issue that a lot of guys have when setting take profits right which is a very common not a newbie mistake but a very common um, trader mistake in general where someone will set a take profit based off the amount that they want to make not the amount that the market makes available which is a very silly mistake to actually make that anyone can make but placing a position and then placing a hundred pip or 100 usd tp without looking at what the structure actually says is a very big mistake. And you will consistently get a whipping from the market if that's the approach that you're gonna have. But using the Fibonacci retracement tool, on the extension rather, then you'll be able to anticipate where you'd like to get out based off what the structure tells you. Okay. As the old trading adage says, the market goes two steps forward and one step backwards. So in a sense, you're always gonna ha have this sort of stair type of motion where the market pushes up 100 pips, okay? And then down, let's say 50. And then again, pushes up 100, and then down 50. All right? So this is gonna continue to happen until it starts moving sideways, starts moving sideways, and then accumulates, accumulates, and then get, gets into sort of like the release stage, and the market either drops or continues to go up, and then it moves in this sort of pattern. It doesn't go straight up, it doesn't go straight down. It's always gonna have that two, sometimes it might be three steps forward and one step backwards, but we know that there's gonna be a push forward right or push to the upside and a retracement to the downside doesn't matter how large it is or how small it is okay um guys it seems like we have less than a minute left oh, i think i took way too much time due to the connection and didn't allow for questions but if you guys do have any questions let's attempt to answer them right now Okay, do you guys have any questions? Okay, um, so if we don't have any questions, 
I'll, I'll just end off the session here because I don't want to get cut off abruptly like last time. Okay, so I'm going to end off tonight's session. I'll send through the previous video where I did with the slides. Hopefully that's going to make it a bit clearer for the guys who are confused here. But if you've got...